All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're gonna do some pruning here on the patio. We're looking at my container fig trees and we're gonna do some pruning on these young trees to get them uh, the right form, to make sure that they're healthy and to also make sure that they are productive next season. And so those are really the, the three main reasons. We also can um, prune for size control, but we'll talk about all three of those things in relation to pruning your container fig trees. And this is <clears throat> quite an important topic because if you can get your fig tree the most photosynthesis next season, you can maximize photosynthesis through pruning, through having the right form, you will have a much more successful season. You'll probably have a higher fruit quality. You'll have more fruits. You'll have an easier time getting them the fruit. And so there's a lot of benefits to pruning and pruning properly. And so that's what we're talking about today. Now, I want to show you this example here. I have selected a particular example. I've already pruned it. We'll talk about the reasons why I did that. Then we'll go around and actually look at some more of these trees and make more cuts and talk about, again, the reasoning. But we're going to very... I think closely look at this example before I get into this again I want to mention well when do we do this pruning and so we just had here in the Philadelphia area it's the 21st of uh, November and so here we had a, a pretty nasty cold last night it was like in the low 20s prior to that we've had many frosts we've had light frosts we've also had a, a much harder frost which really made these these leaves look rather sad and crimpled and now they're falling off the tree this is exactly what i wanted once the frost comes in this harder frost it gets the leaves looking like this and then the combination of that temperature in the low 20s last night is really going to knock the leaves off the trees and so they're really going to be going into dormancy now but this is an early time this is probably the earliest of which i would be doing this um so you don't have to be doing it now. Um, in fact, you could wait a month. Uh, you just wanna make sure you're getting the branches off of the trees here. If you're gonna be using them, you're gonna be selling them, trading them, rooting them, whatever it is. If they're not really well lignified, I would get them off the trees before it dips down into the teens. So something maybe like this is just not that great. It's not that lignified. Uh, but if it is lignified, something like this, or the majority of my container fig trees are, um, if it's young, the chances are the cuttings, the branches won't be that well lignified. But if it's a bit more mature, I don't really have to worry. In fact, they'll, they can very easily get down into the, the, the 15 degree mark. If you have a really, really hardy variety, you might even be able to let this tree and the, the wood be outside till about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's kind of pushing it. I wouldn't go that far. But so the point is we can be doing this pruning a month from now, plenty of time from now. We can even do this in the spring. What you really want to make sure is that the tree is dormant. That's that's the key. These are not as dormant as I'd like, and you can determine that by the sap flow. So the sap flow essentially will stop completely if indeed the tree is fully, fully dormant. Um, not a lot of people in different locations have this luxury, but when you make this cut, some of that carbohydrates is being lost. And so I'd rather have the carbohydrates go back down very slowly into the branches, then into the trunk and then into the roots where it's stored. And so that biological advantage of going dormant and waking up and having that extra amount of sap flow, that, that carbohydrates that's stored, I would rather have that in the tree before I do my pruning. Again, not everybody has that luxury. Uh, if you wanna be doing container pruning of your fig trees, and so you live in a much warmer place than I, and maybe you never even have a dormancy period, the, the trees may never even lose their leaves, or you know, it only happens for a very short period of time, and there's basically always sap flow flowing in these trees. Well then just do your pruning really at the coldest time of the year when they do drop their leaves or really the coldest week. And so that's gonna uh, definitely be something that's helpful for the number of reasons that we mentioned. The size control, also the production next year, uh, the health of the trees, the form of our trees. And so 
let's begin now with this particular tree here this example this is a tree called violet patlican i've had it for a number of years now in this five gallon pot it grew as a single stem whip as i do all my cuttings and then i top them at about a foot and a half this one here is about a foot and so maybe 14 inches and so then it it branched out and formed these two scaffolds that you see on the left and the right and this tree didn't like to branch out. There's something weird about the habit of this tree. I did do a lot of staking, and so I bent these branches on a pretty good angle here, these scaffolds, to encourage them to actually have more access to light, to position the scaffolds away from each other. This is what we want. We want more of that open center. And so these trees then can get the light into the center of the tree and encourage more of these branches as they grow next season to get the light that they need to set those fruit buds that's also a really critical point and so for some reason it just hasn't really been branching out and in fact it just keeps growing taller it just grew taller and taller and so these branches down here that i pruned like this one was right here i wish i had shown you guys before and so this was a quite a tall tree this also was a very unhealthy tree, and so I've had some sunburn issues in the past with this tree. You can see that there on the uh, the cutting. It doesn't really affect the cutting quality as far as I can tell, um, but it may affect the tree's health. And the other thing that's affecting this tree's health, because this just really is not a very healthy tree, is this portion of the wood that was over here. And so I don't know exactly how this happened. I think it's probably a girdle from a stake that I had and perhaps the wood just didn't like life and it just it looks really gnarly and sad and especially for young wood like that to me that's indicating that the tree is not very healthy also we have some much worse sunburn over here on this side and so for the last two years actually this tree has dropped its fruits and so I'm just thinking it's got to be the health of the tree I've watered it more than the majority of my five gallon trees this past season and so i don't think watering was an issue uh it grows actually rather well and it fruits rather well um so i don't think necessarily there's a fig mosaic virus problem from like lower down on the tree because if there's some unhealthy wood down here that is damaged kind of like this it's good to cut that out and maybe if there is some really unhealthy wood whatever is above that will be rather unhealthy with the fig mosaic virus but in terms of observable fig mosaic virus this variety seems rather healthy and so it's a bit of a mystery this tree but i think by removing some of that unhealthy growth i'm going to be better off uh, and so this is just a form of rejuvenation pruning and that's kind of why i wanted to talk about it is that we want to make sure that we're removing anything that's damaged diseased dead uh, at any time and i've actually this tree over here is an ishia black that i have that's grafted i think it's grafted onto maybe black beauty 10 or something like that and so it's done well this year actually it's kind of shaken the virus uh, but unfortunately there is a portion here and i remember this very distinctly in the season it's a good idea to mark the branches but this branch over here is really unhealthy compared to the rest of the tree. Um, this branch didn't do super well. And uh, I think that's probably just due to a lack of light and a lack of dominance from these other branches up here that are taking that dominance. But this branch over here is not healthy. And you can kind of see it with all these little scraggly branches up in here. So I'm going to cut this out. This has definitely got to come out. I'm going to remove that. And so we'll assess what this branch looks like in the beginning of next season. If it's not going to do well, I, wait, I may remove when I visibly see really bad fig mosaic virus or even just a low amount of vigor. I'm going to cut this whole thing out or maybe I'll cut out like this or maybe I'll make a cut here. And so that will kind of get this tree a bit rejuvenated as well removing that unhealthy growth we want the healthier wood to actually produce i'm also going to remove this this to me seems a bit unnecessary um this also seems a bit unnecessary but i'm going to remove this again and see i'm going to keep this again and see what it does in the spring 
it probably is going to get too shaded just based on this branch here and also this branch here this i imagine is so small it's not going to have the growth or vigor that it wants but the more of these tips that we can keep the better off we're going to be the more of these lateral buds also that we can keep the more energy the easier the time we're going to have seeing fruit next year we'll see earlier fruits and we'll also um probably see a higher fruit quality so there's so many benefits to actually not pruning and so i would rather on a tree like this ishia black to kind of finish it off we'll put this branch here a bit on an angle with a stake i will also probably bend this branch over and so that's going to open this up a bit more it's going to bend the branches give them more access to light the more that we can bend these branches on an angle the more light that they can reach if they're up in the air like this shoot here in the middle of this tree it's going to take up all that sunlight it's not going to get a lot of sunlight and it's also going to remove sunlight from other parts of the tree that that may need it so that's one example of this ishia black that again like the other tree here is just not healthy um, it's about the fig mosaic virus ishia black is just notorious for having the virus and so at any point it's a good idea to keep pruning your ishia black i think uh but that's the the problem with it uh and you see here actually look there's sap coming out of the tree because it's just not as dormant as it should also this unhealthy growth that you take off the trees that are heavily infected with the virus it's not a good idea to propagate those because it seems like to me that in every bud of the fig tree that you'll see has a different varying level of carbohydrates uh, obviously because the apical buds the lateral buds have more carbohydrates stored they also have differing levels of uh you know hormonal balance so the bout the hormones within the buds are quite different and that will determine how easy it fruits or how fast it grows next season so to me that's why it's really important to keep these apical buds and lateral buds because those are the ones that will actually have the better chance to fruit and produce a lot of fruit the other thing that these buds have each individual bud has a differing level of fig mosaic virus as well so if you are keeping a unhealthy bud on the tree and you're allowing that to grow, the virus continues from that point. And of course, if you were to prune that off, like in this Ishia black, and you were to keep that wood and, you know, propagate it, well, then you're only perpetuating the virus again. You're only making that continue on. Um, and so it lives, it seems like, in portions of trees that virus much more heavily than in other portions of trees um okay so let's see here let's go down the line and we'll start pruning some other ones now this i really like this verdino giacomo tree it's a type of adriatic and so it has the four scaffolds the main stem coming up here from the base i'll get out of the uh the light but this scaffold here in the middle, or at least this central leader, this is kind of what that's become. I can either bend this and then space these scaffolds away, and that'll open up more light into the center. So that's what I'm gonna do. For most of these trees, if I can stake something, I will. And most of them are gonna have to be staked. So like this branch here, again, is gonna have to be staked more towards me. This one is really nice how it's already kind of on the angle that we look for something young like this the branches are kind of growing straight up in the air so this has got to come over more to the on an angle this has got to go also on an angle and so if we angle these off again these scaffolds especially when they're young will be better off same thing with something like this uh so again there are minimal cuts that i am making but not in, like there isn't many cuts that i'm going to be making here this is a coldenom gigantina it grew as a single stem whip that I had as an air layer. It was extremely well rooted. Put it into this five gallon size pot. Last year it grew these scaffolds and it grew also from here. Then I think I topped it. And by topping it, it in the summer, it grew these nice other shoots here. And this one continued to grow. It had the most dominance. And so what I'm thinking is I can either stake this, like I've been saying, 
stake that on an angle and that'll open up the center of this tree a bit more but i also think this is just too vigorous and so we're just going to remove this completely we will try our best to stake this on an angle it's it's going to be more difficult now but if i can get this a bit on an angle where these scaffolds here or these branches can grow outwards in this direction we're going to be better off for the the overall shape of the tree and so i'm really happy with the coldenam gigantina by the way guys it seems like a quite a healthy tree and if you can get them in the ground any of the coldenams they just become a lot healthier you air layer something from that or propagate something from that you got a nice container tree that's a lot less finicky you know something like this coldenam mutante down here it's just not really that healthy and they just it seems like they take forever these coldenams but they're absolutely worth it like if i can get one that's not so much of a problem child i'll be better off uh here's something interesting this is a brown turkey tree that i have it's a southern brown turkey which by the way uh i think is completely misunderstood but there are some branching down here from the base that is completely unnecessary taking away energy from other parts of the tree so we're going to remove that now some of these suckers you may actually be able to find even in containers some roots along with them but that right there is kind of in a way it's not going to get the light it needs it's not going to fruit very well and so you're taking away energy from really the top of the tree where it's the most important um, that's something in particular so most of my cuts i mean there really isn't going to be more cuts that i have to make on most of these trees again if there's something unhealthy i see I'm gonna remove it some of them like the gagantina is a little bit taller than i'd like here's a decent example of something i think is rather interesting let's get this tree out of here and look at it this is i think crosby if i'm not mistaken yep so this is my crosby tree and so it's grown really nicely in fact this whole thing here grew up and put out a lot of fruit didn't get to taste any unfortunately but what also happened is that it put out this nice sucker down here at the base and this is really really healthy this growth and would make a nice trunk a nice base for my tree and so if something over here let's say wasn't healthy not that i don't think this looks terribly unhealthy because i know how well this grew and i know how well it fruited but i could potentially cut out all of this i will cut out this piece back here but i could make a cut all the way down here which would then make this the main trunk of my tree and that's worth doing as i said the big mosaic virus lives in more it's, it's higher it's present in different sections of the tree in higher concentration so if you can get yourself a really nice trunk of your tree that's super healthy a nice sucker you're going to have a healthier tree just going forward in general you're going to be better off uh, something like this here's a decent example this is a vertolino tree i have that's really really struggling and is unhealthy and so this is one of these trees that you want to prune it to make it healthier but the more that you prune it the more you risk actually killing it and so there's only so many viable buds on here what you really want to do is prune it to some degree and i will do this in the spring to encourage some sort of healthy growth from this point um, i may just remove the tip and call it a day another example here where we're struggling but again it's actually forming some healthy wood here so this may eventually turn into something pretty decent um, let's see here in terms of size control what you could do because i have some older trees over here you saw the gigantina where we had that one branch that was quite tall and so if you really wanted to you could um you know prune out those taller branches you could also stake them which is my personal preference or you could come in here and like remove an entire scaffold and so when you remove a whole scaffold that's reducing the height quite significantly that's more i think though recommended for for taller um 
in-ground trees. And so I would just recommend when you have a tree that has been in a container for a decently long period of time, like let's say my Smith right here, it really is probably the tree I've had in containers the longest um, that's at least in a container right now. And so this Smith has a lot of these nice branching that comes out every year. And so the more pruning I do on this, the less fruit I'm going to get because this tree already basically has the right form. I don't need to be pruning this any further for size control. And I don't really need to be pruning this for pretty much any reason. If anything, I could do some staking. Now, maybe there is too much branching in here as an example. So maybe I'll come in here and remove that. Some of these really small branches, but as the tree gets older and older, it slows down in growth. And you'll see that because the tree is, you're not pruning it as much. You're not going for form. You're not making more heavier cuts. You are lightly pruning the tree, if anything. And so you're keeping all these apical buds and these lateral buds. And so the tree basically stays the same size forever. I mean, it really doesn't get much bigger than this. Um, and so you're able to basically, if you do this right, you get the form set up where we have it, a single stem trunk that comes up. You top that at about a foot and a half, two feet. You get the scaffolds that you want. Ideally, you put them on an angle. That was something I didn't do right away on this tree. And then you stake some of these scaffolds. And then, of course, all these systems of branches form where you have these nice fruiting branches that every year put out fruit very, very easily. Uh, and then, of course, you start forming these little fruiting branches everywhere along the tree where there's light. And so then the tree becomes ultra productive. And so the name of the game, I think, is to get the form just set up as quickly as you can. And then once you start getting more of these branches every year, don't remove them. Keep most of these on the tree unless they just look very, very unhealthy or very sad. Um, like maybe this one here doesn't look too great. But pretty much all of these branches that have a decent enough width produce some sort of fruit. And so this is how you get lots and lots of fruit on your tree. Uh, it's with all these really small, nice fruiting branches. Um, so again, like even on, by the way, the larger trees that I've just mentioned. Here's one that was in a five gallon last year. Again, we grew it out to a single stem whip. I topped it. It formed these scaffolds. We got this nice branch here that formed. And then over here at the top, we're getting these fruiting branches here that are very fruitful. And they're growing rather slowly. Like if you look at the, the length of this branch versus the length of this whole branch, it's almost double or triple the size because the hormones are, are different. When we make these larger cuts, we change the hormones and, and tell it to grow and not to fruit. So this is just, this tree here has really got its form set up pretty good. And that's all. Now there was a, a sucker that came up from the base. I actually tried to air layer it. And so actually, yeah, look at that. We got some air, we got some roots on it. So I'll cut this off. And then I'll put that into a larger pot here. This is Norella. And then what's nice is that this sucker is rather healthy. We can stake this next season. And this can become potentially a, a new scaffold for our tree. I'd rather not prune. It would be nice if you look at the structure of this. It'd be nice if we filled in some of this space. Uh, it'd be nice if we filled in some of this space. So there's, um, if you think about our trees as like a pentagon, right? Pentas five, I think. We'll just, we'll just assume it's five. And then essentially in every corner of that pentagon, we want to fill up some fruiting branches. And so that's what Smith here, this very old Smith tree I have is doing. You just want to have these systems of branches everywhere you can so that it's always putting out, it's getting the light that it needs and therefore it will put out the fruit that it, it can very, very easily that way. And so again, that's, that's it. I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than that. 
I know there was a few rules and I think you guys really ought to follow the rules that I've mentioned. Um, you know, try not to do pruning if you can, do staking. Um, try to preserve all those apical buds. Try to preserve the lateral buds. Try not to prune as much as you can. Prune for, you know, health, prune for form. Um, and prune to maximize that light. But if you're gonna be, you already got the right form, you don't really need to go crazy with the pruning. There's just no need. You're already gonna have the right, the right size and you're gonna have great um, light that gets into your trees. And therefore you're able to, of course, get the fruit set and uh, even just an easier time getting them the fruit. Um, I've got quite a few trees though that are, somewhat problems and so this one here is a, a pastelier <laughs> this one i guess is an extreme example and so it's just too tall and so inevitably if i need to stake this this branch here on quite a nice angle and even this branch on quite a nice angle um but the problem is this tree is probably going to be inevitably just too big for my storage area and so therefore I may struggle with the size on that one. And it's good to actually prune them a little bit smaller in the summer to get that form right when it's about a foot and a half, two feet in height. Now, sometimes you have to wait till it is about three feet because the tree isn't really that strong just yet. And so you wanna wait before you do that topping. But, you know, I, that's the, the beauty of this, I think, is that every tree is different, every variety is different. They all grow rather differently. And so there's different steps that have to be taken for every one of these trees. It's not such a cut and dry, I think, thing, but those are the rules. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care, everybody. Hit that subscribe button, check out our blog. We do have some cuttings, I'm sure, coming up for sale and check out some of the merch that we've been doing on Teespring. We will see you guys soon. Again, take care.